What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of That Guy Mike. And today we have a special one for you. It's going to be a long video, not going to lie. So I would highly suggest to get comfortable, lay back, sit back, get yourself a drink, maybe a little snacky snack. Hey, and uh, yeah, I'm going to walk you through in real time with as minimal editing as possible. I'm going to try to do um, as less cuts as I can. Obviously, to save time, I will cut out things that are just, you know, time wasted. But uh, yeah, so here I wanted to show off for you guys. I have a, it's a fluval light in my tank. It is Bluetooth connected. And if you hit here, you can set all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to demonstrate here. You just tap, turn the light off, tap, turn it back on. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, different colors and whatnot and different modes. You can like simulate cloudy weather or thunderstorms, lightning strikes, all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I really don't use it. I only use it for um, timed lighting, if that makes sense. So I have it set up to where the lights gradually come on in the morning as if it was an artificial sunrise. It'll stay on basically all day and then it'll go down with the sun in real time. Um, just like outside and the lights will dim and go dark and then have a subtle blue light throughout the night to I guess just replicate the, the moonlight and that's pretty calming for them and they tend to like that so now on here I just want to make very clear that if it wasn't obvious already. I love my dogs and they're right here. It's my little baby right here. Her name is Milo. She's a Shiba Inu. That's my baby girl right there. Always by my side, watching over me, protecting me. She's a killer, so you know. Um, and then under the table, I got my other dog. Her name is Mika. And we're still trying to figure out what she is, honestly. We don't know. She could be mixed with all kinds of stuff. When we rescued her, they said, oh yeah, she's a German Shepherd mixed with Rottweiler. And the, yeah, there's no way. She's tiny. She's already nearly three years old. No, that's not what she is. So we'll figure it out someday. As you can see, I'm just placing stuff on the table, getting my stuff ready. Blocked Milo there. I didn't even mean to, but I'll get it moved here shortly. And if you guys have any questions as to what any of all this stuff is that I'm taking out, putting on the table, because it looks weird, let me know in the comments below and I will answer those questions for you. If you take a look at the top of my tank, you'll notice that there's some bags floating. So yes, this is going to be a complete, well, not a complete water change, but about 75, 80% water change, along with an addition of a few fish and I will also be testing the water and giving you guys some tips along the way on how you can do this yourself as you should be to maintain a healthy ecosystem, a healthy tank, and long thriving healthy fish. Here, if you're wondering, I've got two wave makers, relatively small, on this top side of the tank that I'm working on right now. And I'm pulling this one out because for a couple of days now, I noticed that there wasn't as much water agitation as there usually is on the surface. And upon expecting, found out that this wave maker was actually not working. It was plugged in. I tried to shake off maybe some algae that was surrounding the housing to see if that would fix anything if anything was caught up but nothing seemed to work at the time so for now i'm gonna set this aside and i will get working on it a little later in the video and we'll see how that turns out so right now the most important thing right now is preparation for what's about to go down and that's not to intimidate or scare anybody away. That's not saying that this is a long, hard process. It's just the way I do things. I'm very meticulous with 
where I put things, how I keep it, what I want around me while I'm doing this. That way the process goes as smooth as possible. Right here in this bag, I have a bunch of plastic pipettes and you can get yourself some on Amazon or typically some local fish stores will have some. And what I'll be doing is I'll actually be using that dropper later on with some Seachem Prime to treat the water inside of the bags that the fish are being kept in right now. And I'll explain that or I'll explain why in a little bit. Right there, I grabbed my hose along with my, my pump in preparation to take water out of the tank. There's Milo. Good girl, good girl. Again, that's my baby. Got my scissors. Say hi to the camera. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge dog lover, so. Here, what I'll do now is I will take these bags out. They've been acclimating for well over 20 minutes. I'd say about 30 minutes. So the temperature inside the bag should match the water inside the aquarium itself. Good idea to grab a towel to dry these off. So that way I don't get any water dripping on the floor. And here we will see I have two relatively small yellow labs. And I actually love yellow labs. They're an awesome fish especially as far as the embunas go. Embunas are known to be quite aggressive and territorial. And as far as they go, these yellow labs, along with the yellowfin ACI, I got my Seachem Prime. Can't do nothing in this hobby without that. I will go to the grave with that. I recommend Prime to everyone and anyone to make your water safe, to dechlorinate and to neutralize any ammonia. So here's what I'm doing. So what you don't know is, depending on how long a fish was in its bag for, there's a couple things going on chemically. So as the water temperature inside the bag drops, so does the pH level. Although the ammonia levels are rising because they're pooping while they're in that water in the bag, the lower the pH and the temperature, the less toxic the ammonia is. Now, once you open up that bag to fresh oxygen, you'll get a spike in ammonia along with a rise in pH, which increases the toxicity of that ammonia. So where the prime comes in is it will neutralize and detoxify that ammonia. So that way it's safe for your fish until you're ready to put them in your tank. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking them out one by one cutting them open, putting a little bit of just a couple drops. It's really concentrated, pretty strong stuff, but it's safe for your fish up to five times if you were to overdose it. So no worries, that's actually a comforting fact. Here I have a lemon blue-eyed bristlenose pleco. Love these guys. Please do your research on your plecos. I know a lot of people want to get fish to take care of their algae in the tank. Do not get mistaken by buying a common pleco or a Florida pleco. They look small. You might like how they look in the store, but they get monstrous in size. And we're talking anywhere between 18 to 24 inches. So yeah, that's almost two feet. A fish. That's quite big. So be careful with that. These guys actually only get about four to six inches long, which is perfect. And with that small size, keeps them active as, you know, the bigger the fish gets, the lazier they tend to become because they have all that body weight behind them now. They're a lot slower, not as agile. And so, you know, they don't really do as much work for you as you're wanting them to. So when you get these bristle noses and they stay relatively small, um, they're pretty active fish. They're always moving around, always finding the next spot to clean. So they are awesome and they get along great with all African cichlids. And right here we have a rare find from the local pet store. This is a star sapphire. And yeah, these are not easy to find, not even online really. So I got really lucky with this one. So whether it's a male or a female, don't really know yet. But can't wait to find out and see when this fish chips up those beautiful blue shimmering white speckles so 
just like the other bags. You take that dropper, take in a little bit of prime, drop it in the bag, and then take this bag and set it over to the side with the others inside of a bucket until they're ready to go into the tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue this process with the last fish that's in the tank. Uh, the one bag that you see back there in the tank, obviously it is different, it's a Ziploc bag. This bag was actually my fish already that I grew from a wee little lad in my other tank that's not in view right now. It was a grow out tank and this uh, guy right here is a stud. Right here I have a red empress and he looks absolutely sick and he's only gonna get better. He's still relatively small. Maybe about three inches. So as he gets older, the more he'll color up. And I'm excited for that one. So let's keep this going. So here what you actually see me doing is messing with my light, sliding it back so that way I can get into my tank without it interfering with the light at all. It actually has these extension pieces on the side that I can stretch out. So that way it sits just on the edge of each tank and it doesn't fall in. And by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, if you're interested in knowing more about the light that I have or maybe you want to get yourself one, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. So check that out. And right now what you see me doing is actually what I always like to do prior to a water change, which is check my water parameters as always, just to see where it's at. And then about a couple hours later after the actual water change, I'll actually test my water again to see how it's improved and see how much an effect I actually had in the water change. So going off screen real quick, coming back to clean that one tube that had some stuff in it already and yeah, we're gonna go one by one in each one of these tubes. Testing for a couple things. Mainly what I test for is ammonia, nitrates. I'll check my pH. Um, usually I'll do it on both ends of the spectrum. So I'll do regular pH along with my high range pH to get the most accurate reading um, as possible. So yeah, right now what I'm gonna do is go one by one and collect some water, about five mLs per tube and we'll get the testing. So right off the bat, if you're not familiar with this testing kit, I'm gonna start with my ammonia. It comes with two bottles, it comes with two parts, uh, both of which you have to mix together into the water sample to get a reading. So super important, what you wanna do is take each bottle and give it a good shake for a few seconds. 30 seconds if you can, that obviously wasn't 30 seconds. I'm kinda of rushing this a little bit. And on the, bottle, on the bottle itself, it'll actually tell you how many drops per bottle into vial. So this one, I believe it's eight drops. So that's bottle one. And I'll go ahead and take my second bottle, give it a good shake. And right there, it'll tell you bottle two. And I believe it's about eight drops for ammonia specifically. So we'll count these drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe. There we go. Once we get those in there, Throw the cap on that vial. Make sure it's got a nice tight seal. Flip it and then shake it. Give this one a good shake, 10 to 30 seconds. Get a feel for it. Once you're done with that, I'll put that one back down and then I'll move on to the next. So right here is my chart. 
what I'm looking for is zero parts per million on ammonia, which is that middle row, very top. So I want a yellow and nitrate. I also want in the yellow. And I pointed to specifically those two things that I'm gonna be testing for. So right here we have two bottles. Again, this is for nitrates, two parts. Now, but these specifically, you wanna make sure you give these a really good shake. Once you do, follow the directions on the bottle, just like ammonia. I believe this one's 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Been doing this for a while. Put that aside. Grab bottle number two. Give it a good shake. Say what's up to the dog. And again, ten drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'll do it for nitrates throw a cap on that bad boy, make sure it's a good seal, flip it and shake it. Give this one a nice good shake. This one longer than the others to make sure you really, really get it mixed up. And now very important, do not be deceived. When you first start shaking it, it's gonna start off as one color. And what you wanna do is give it about five minutes. And after that five minutes, check your reading and the color should change. So I'm expecting this to be about I would say 40 to 80 parts per million anywhere in that ballpark. So it should turn a pretty good red. All right, so at this point, I went ahead and untangled that madness in my wire on my pump. And I'm gonna go ahead, open my tank up and drop the pump right in there. This is made by Vivo Sun. You can find it on Amazon. So if you're interested in getting a pump yourself, you're gonna see here in a little bit why it's super convenient to have one. This one's rated at about, I wanna say 800 gallons per hour, which is pretty good. And for the price, you can't really complain. I believe I got it under $30 on Amazon. So yeah, versus some water pumps I found in my local fish store, they were trying to charge me anywhere upwards of 50 to $80 for a pump half as strong. All right, so now I'm gonna take the open end of that hose, put it in my sink, and then you're gonna see here, once I plug in the pump, it's gonna automatically start, and you'll see that hose jolt. There you go. The water is going to go all the way through and I'm checking it out to make sure that it's actually going into the sink as it is and I'm happy. So that's cool. And then what I'm going to do is I got this large bin over here to the side. I'm going to grab it, show you guys it is empty. Nothing's in it. And while the tank is draining, I'll go ahead and my sink, I have an extendable, uh, I guess, spout. So while I'm draining the tank, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that tote as well with water that's gonna go back into the tank as clean water. So now, really, you can just chill, enjoy the show. Um, I will warn you on this, something to keep in mind. When you are draining your tank, do not forget to turn off certain things inside of your tank, uh, meaning your heater, that's very important. If your heater's not submerged in the water as it's supposed to and you have it plugged in it can overheat it will overheat which means it'll also burst and that's it you'll have to get a new heater so make sure you turn that off other things you might want to consider turning off like i do at the top of one side of my tank i have wave makers so i went ahead and unplugged that and for now i left my filter going so as you can see on the top center of the tank there's pretty much a, a pretty good flow coming out from my outflow which is fine because the intake is still submerged pretty low in my tank, but at a certain point, I'll go ahead and I'll shut that off too. Just so that way I'm not creating so much splash. The only thing I keep on at this point is the bottom lower side uh, wave maker. And that's just to keep a current flow and a little bit of agitation on the surface of the water once it gets down to that level. So that way there's still some aeration going on in the water, so.
Okay, so at this point, about five minutes has passed by, so I'm gonna go ahead and check my reading on my nitrates. And better than what I thought, actually, and it's kind of hard to see, I apologize about that, but my readings are showing about 10 to 20, maybe slightly over 20 parts per million, which is awesome, meaning that I honestly could have went a couple more days before doing a water change. But because I keep an overstock tank, it's better to do multiple water changes when you have the free time, uh, meaning more than once a week. So that's exactly what I did here. And now it's about that time where I'm gonna turn off my filter so that way there's not a, too much splashing. And I'm gonna unplug it from the back after I've turned on the flow so that way it can maintain that vacuum within the hoses. So when I start it back up, it should turn right back on without uh, sucking in too much air and whatnot. So. At this point, again, just like I've been doing, you kind of want to just sit back, monitor your fish, get that water level down as far as possible. When I say 80%, it's going to get down to right at the point where it's uh, basically touching my lower wave maker, just above the height of my water pump there. So, And while that's going on, it's a great opportunity to go ahead and if you wanted to, on the inside of your tank, go ahead and scrub the glass, get that free of any algae or film that might have built up over time. This doesn't happen too much in my tank, but I'm pretty picky about how clean the glass looks. Uh, this is my main show tank, so I'm gonna have people over. This is kind of like the talking piece or whatnot, so I'm pretty anal about it. I want it to look crystal clear as possible, so. Every little moment that I get, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub the glass from the inside, make sure it's nice and good to go. And then at the end of it all, I'll go ahead and come back with a wet, wet paper towel and wipe the outside of the glass too to make sure that it is spotless. So while you're waiting for your water level to get down to where you want it, it's a good opportunity to check out your fish, monitor their behavior. Maybe if you have any females, you'll be able to see here if any of them are holding or whatnot. But yeah, take the time to take a second, check out your fish and see how they're behaving. All right, so we are just about there. But first, quick rap battle with my dog. Saying she wants to hang out with me, so I'm going ahead and set up her stool right there. Have her take a seat, ask for a high five, maybe give her some love. Come on, guys. I'm a dog lover, of course, I'm gonna give her some love. But all right, so now I got that indicator that my water level is low enough. You can barely see on the right side the surface agitation of my water, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the pump. That tells me that I'm at a low enough level to where I wanna be. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the pump. And the reason why I take it out immediately is because even though I turned it off, it created a siphon. So it'll slowly keep pulling water out of the tank when I don't want it to. So I got to pull that pump out, give it a shake, make sure any water that's being held inside gets drained out. And I'm gonna take this little cloth and dry it up as much as possible. Cause now I'm gonna transfer that pump to the tote that I had filling with clean water um, at my kitchen sink. And now I'm gonna put that pump inside the tote and then I'm gonna take the open end of my tube and redirect it inside the tank and I'm gonna reverse the process. So super simple, it really doesn't take much. Coming from doing water changes with a five gallon bucket, filling it up, walking it over to the sink, emptying it, coming back to the tank, siphoning more water to fill up that five gallon bucket and repeating that process over and over and over again. It probably took me about, man, I don't even know, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of back and forth with that five gallon bucket 
just to get it down to where it's at right now, which is a pain and I don't recommend that torture on anybody. So if you can, if you've got the money to do so, get yourself a pump, get yourself a siphon, a large enough uh, siphon. Um, one that's popular is the Python. If not, you can get a store brand somewhere else. They do the same thing, honestly, but get yourself a pump. It'll just make life so much easier, make this process a lot more efficient, and it'll cause a lot less strain on your back. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm taking out some of these rocks uh, from my tank. Whenever I do a water change, I don't go crazy with scaping, but I do change things up just a little bit, just to tweak it. And the reason why I do that is because since I have embunas mixed with peacocks, um, anybody who keeps these kind of fish should know that embunas are more of a, a rock dwelling fish. And so if you don't change up the decor, they'll make some of these rock scapes their, you know, their territory and whatnot. And that's how they become aggressive. So what I do is every week when I do my water change, I just change up the rocks just a little bit. I take this tool here without the blade and without a brush, or I'm sorry, without the pad. And I'll use that to go ahead and push around some sand or whatnot if I need to, because these guys love to redecorate the tank. But going back to the rocks, like I was saying, I'll move them around just a little bit so that way I can break down that territory. And so that way it can get reestablished within one week when I, before I do my next water change. So here I have another tool that's more specifically made to move around the sand because that other tool that I was using it just wasn't cutting it. Going back to what I was talking about earlier though with the rock work, all that kind of stuff, these are the things that it takes to just minimize aggression in a tank. There are so many naysayers in this hobby and there's a lot of people that just spread the negativity, especially to new people to this hobby kind of like intimidating them, um, which keeps them away from, you know, keeping African cichlids, which sucks because in my opinion, they're one of the best fish to keep. But at the same time, this hobby and keeping these kind of fish are not for the lazy. So with that being said, those are just things that you have to ask yourself before diving in. Are you willing to keep up with the fish the way you're supposed to? And are you willing to do these extra little things in between to make sure you maintain peace within your tank. So that way you can go ahead and keep all the fish that you want in one tank without having to, you know, decide whether or not uh, I can only keep peacocks or I can only keep embunas for these reasons. Like, I'm just one of those people who will look you dead in the face if you're that naysayer and tell you false, it's not true. It can absolutely 100% be done. And I prove it every single day. I've been doing this for over a year now and I've had nothing but success keeping these fish. I've created another video if you guys haven't seen it. I'll go ahead and add a card up here in the corner if you wanna check that out where I'm talking specifically on some of the simple rules that you gotta to follow to make sure you keep and maintain peace in your tank to have success. So it really isn't that hard, but again, you can't be lazy with this stuff. Every week, it requires a minute, a, a water change and I say minimum a week in between each water change. And if you're doing so, I would also say a minimum of at least 50 to 80% of water change. So that took a little bit of finessing, but once I'm done, dry my hands, take a second and look at it. Do I like it? Nice. Hey, yep, that is the sign right there. That is a, a clear sign from yours truly that, yep, I like how it came out. So yeah, don't mind me, I'm, uh, yeah. So 
So now we've come time to add the new fish. So what I'll do first, I have my thermometer. I'm checking the temperature inside the bag, which is what the fish are already accustomed to. Once I have the temperature that's inside the bag, I'm gonna check the temperature of the current water in the tank and make sure they're relatively the same. If they are, cool. Then we can move forward. So what I'll do is I have this container right there on the table. As soon as I get all that stuff out of it, I'll move that to the side. And yes, it is clean and this is for fish only. And I'll grab my net and I'm gonna place it right on top with the corners of the net catching the edge of the container so that way it doesn't fall completely inside the container and I'm gonna drain the bag into the container through the net catching the fish in the net <clears throat> and doing so we'll make sure that while the fish is in the net he's still submerged in the water and then when I'm ready to transfer I'm gonna pick him up and I'm gonna carry him over into the tank bring him down into the water and release him to his new home. And this is the process that I do for every single fish, every single time. And the reason why I do it during a water change is because it creates kind of a chi uh, chaotic, Jesus, kind of like a chaotic environment for them. And the reason why that's helpful is because everybody's trying to figure out, you know, their new territory since I changed stuff up. They don't have as much space to swim, so they're kind of frantic at this point. They're not really worried about any new fish that are coming into the tank. And right there, as you just saw, I got rid of the water that came out of that bag. And I'm gonna do that again for every single uh, fish because I don't want them getting into any water from the previous fish, not knowing if that water that they were just in has too high of ammonia levels or whatnot. So just playing it safe throughout the whole process, the least risk that you can take, or I should say, whatever path it is that you can take to take the least risk, that's what you should do. Hope I'm making sense, I'm not losing any of you. But yeah, pour the bag in, take the fish out from the net, put them in the tank and release. And again, doing so while the tank is chaotic, will keep the focus off of the new fish and will give you the best chance to, uh, or will give the fish, the new fish, the best chance to survive and not get picked on by any of the older fish. So yeah, follow these tactics and you should be good to go. Before adding new water, what you will need to do is grab yourself a bottle of Seachem Prime or whatever you like to use, maybe API or some other brand, to go ahead and treat your water before adding your new water, especially coming from tap. Mind you, this is 
coming from tap. So this is the method that you're gonna wanna follow. Wanna treat the water just before you start adding it so that way you can start detoxifying or maybe a better word is start dechlorinating that tap water because if you don't already know, tap water does come treated, chlorinated, that's good for us, but not good for the fish. Now, some people would argue and say that, hey, you should probably treat your water in a separate container, maybe the tote before throwing in the water in the tank. But I'm here to tell you that either way works perfectly fine. I used to do the old method, um, but then over time I realized after doing much, much research, like we all should be doing, continue educating yourself on this stuff. A little bit of chlorine once adding it in is not gonna have an immediate effect on your fish. So it's okay and it's safe to do so. What you really wanna look out for is just the temperature of the water that's going into the tank. Trying to make sure it matches up to what's already in the tank as close as possible. So that way you're not shocking your fish with too cold of water or too hot of water. Um, I believe they say that the, typically you wanna stay within five degrees plus or minus what's already in the tank. Um, that's a good rule of thumb. Um, worst case scenario, if you have no way of checking the temperature at all, then you'll just have to go by feel, uh, which is a little scary for some people. I personally don't trust that method. I do have a thermometer. That's what I use and I'm pretty nitpicky. I try to make sure that the temperature is as close as possible before throwing it into the tank. So like I said, treat your water before you add it. It'll go ahead and take care of whatever that tap water is, has, and yeah, it'll be good to go. So while that's filling up, I figured this will probably be a good time to see what's going on with this wave maker I have here. And I figured maybe the impeller was clogged or the propeller, I should say. Um, but no, what happened was the housing of the propeller itself, for whatever reason, seems to have and this is really weird. If someone has a similar experience, please let me know, drop it in the comments, but it really seemed like the housing shrunk in a way or whatnot. So cleaned it up really good, took out all the gunk. I put the housing right back on, it snapped into place. Um, a little trickier than I thought it would be at first, but once I got it all cleaned out, it seemed to have done the trick, plugged it back in and it started right back up. And then I did notice the next day after this, it did stop again. And all I had to do when I reached into the tank, I kind of squeezed the sides of the housing, kind of like to see if something got clogged up in there again or something. And no, it, it just, I don't know, it's really strange. The housing seemed to have been really tight, tighter than what it should be. And it's restricting the propeller from spinning. So could that be a manufacturer defect? Maybe. But before this started happening, I've had these wave makers for well over six months. So it's a new issue. Don't know how it started, don't know what's causing it. But if it keeps happening, well, what can I say? I guess I'm just gonna have to get a new wave maker to replace it. But until then, it is back up and running and should be good to go. So now, while the tank is filling up, it's a great time to just start getting my stuff organized, putting everything together, and getting it put away. And by the way, it's probably a good time to let you guys know that if there's anything at all that you guys see on this table throughout the entire video, even if I don't mention anything about it, I will have links in the description on Amazon. So that way you can check them out yourself and pick something up that you may need or want. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And yeah. So now that we got most of the stuff cleared off the table, we're not at the end of the road yet, although we are almost there. So again, while the tank is still filling up, I bought a brand new bottle because I last uh, ran out of it. I got some stress zyme right here made by API. And by the way, guys, I'm not sponsored at all in any way, shape or form by API or Seachem or any other brand at all. So don't think that any of this is biased. This is purely from personal experience and trying different things out. This is the stuff that I use as of right now. Something better comes into the market or if there's something that I, I gravitate to that I really like, then I'm just gonna switch up. But until then, this is what I use. API and Seachem are basically the two brands I've, I've stuck with for the long run now. But what you have to understand is this. So stress time is gonna become very important to us right now because I added new fish to the tank. And as you can see behind me, 
in the tank, I do have a pretty well populated tank, meaning that it's uh, pretty overflown with fish. Uh, man, the word is escaping me right now. What is it? I cannot think of it right now. But either way, um, that stress zyme is going to go ahead and give us the extra needed beneficial bacteria that we're going to need. And it's going to help us boost that bacteria in the tank so that way you can handle the extra amount of bio load that's going to be added to the tank now that I put more fish in it. So it's already an overstocked tank as it is and me adding more fish to it no matter the size is going to increase the bio load and what I mean by bio load is uh, detritus and what I mean by detritus fish poop people that's what I'm talking about and that as we all know creates ammonia and what we don't want in the long run is an ammonia spike so to take care of that extra added ammonia that's going to come with adding new fish we're going to go ahead and add some stress time adding that extra beneficial bacteria giving it a boost so that way when those ammonias present themselves we'll have enough bacteria in the water or in the tank itself to go ahead and eliminate that ammonia turn it into nitrate nitrite i should say which will then turn them into its last and final form of nitrate and that nitrate is what we get rid of by doing these huge water changes every week. So what you just saw was me turning my filter back on and the reason why you saw it spit water out then stop and then kick back on is because when the water levels dropped even though I did show off the hoses to maintain a vacuum so that way it didn't take up too much air that water level dropped beyond the intake to where the intake was exposed to air so the air got into that tube so that way when I kicked the filter back on that little bit of air created a little bit of a pocket. So it went through the system, pushed the water out that was remaining inside the tubes. That's what you saw initially until that air escaped. And then once it did, the water kicked back on. So no issues, perfectly normal. It's expected. Um, but as long as I get to the point where I'm at right now, that's where I want to be. And once the water levels get high enough, even more, I'll be able to turn on my wave makers off to the top side there. And if you're wondering what I'm using in this video at the time that I am shooting this video right now, I'm currently only running a Fluval 307 canister filter. Now I've gotten a lot of crap about this, but it's been good for me so far on this 60 gallon. Nothing crazy. At this time, currently when I'm actually voicing this over, I'm currently now running two Fluval 307s and adding an additional title, uh, hang on the back filter to act as a skimmer uh, for my tank as well. So there'll be plenty of filtration on this by the time it's uploaded. But for the time being, when I'm shooting this video, I was only running a single Fluval 307 and it's been run this way for over a year now. No issues, no complaints at all. Crystal clear water, no floating around detritus. It's been good to me. Why is that? A lot of, lot of, lot of practice and a lot of trial and error trying to figure out the best way to set up my wave makers to direct all that water current and all that, you know, floating material in the water directly to the intake of my filter to, you know, maintain a clearest, cleanest looking water I possibly can.
so at this point we are just about finished i appreciate you guys if you've made it this far in the video i know this has been a long one and it kind of seems dragged out but i really want to be super duper transparent on how it is i personally do my water changes now obviously i'm not adding fish every single time this happened to be a one-off but i figure hey why not put it in the video make something of it so if you're wondering how long it usually takes to do a water change if you're just doing a straight up water change a quick water check as far as your parameters go this shouldn't take you any longer than 30 45 minutes to the max and i'm really serious about that so if you've made it this far again i super like really appreciate it and i would appreciate it even more if you drop the like and uh, hit that subscribe so you don't miss any future content my you know big purpose in making these videos starting this channel was to make it a whole lot easier and less intimidating for people to get into this hobby because i know that there's a lot of miscommunication there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to keeping fish and you know even though there is a lot more to it than people think it also isn't that hard and it really uh, doesn't require someone to be a marine biologist or a chemist of any kind like really pretty straightforward pretty simple as long as you follow these uh, few uh, you know rules here and there do your research make sure you know what kind of fish you're getting into what fish they can go with what fish they absolutely cannot mix with those are very important things to know it'll save you a lot of money in the long run um, so yeah um, again thank you thank you thank you and also we finally hit over 100 subscribers i'm super thankful for that i appreciate it so much and if you can just help me out by sharing this video i know we can make it to 200 sooner than it took to make it to 100. it was a little bit of a long road and honestly can't really blame anybody but myself because i wasn't as consistent as i want to be with these videos but editing takes time and recording takes even more time so either way let's get back to this right so now that i got everything plugged back in uh basically all done now what i want to do right now is do another test of my water now that it's been changed and i'm checking the nitrate level we already know that the ammonia is zero so putting new water in there is not going to give it more ammonia so i just want to check these nitrates and see how they fare out compared to what they were looking like when we first tested the water and yeah the change may surprise you now that we are done with that nothing like coming by with a clean rag and just wiping down the tank and admiring your finished work so if you're wondering what i use to clean my glass nothing special just a moist towel with some regular water I don't really use chemicals at all, not even the aquarium safe ones that you can spray on the glass, even though you could. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, I just don't. And using a microfiber towel and a little bit of moisture, wiping down the tank works perfectly fine for me. I don't have any kids running around uh, with sticky fingers or whatnot, and my dogs don't jump up on here and lick the glass or touch it with their wet nose. So there's no reason for it to really ever get dirty at all. And unless I'm doing something in the tank and some water drops come down along the side of it. But other than that, nothing crazy here. Just wiping it down. And yeah, like I said, there's nothing like a beautiful, clean, clear uh, aquarium to just stay mesmerized by. So...
by the way, everyone, if you want a master class on how to fold a towel like a professional, bam. Just let me know in the comments below. That's so corny. <laughs> Anyways, so before I forget, which I almost did clearly in this video as I was putting everything away, I still got to plug in this wave maker. So that's what I'm going to do now. Waited till last minute. I definitely did not forget about it, which is a lie. So <clears throat> just got to make some space, open up the back half of this glass. So that way I can reach up in there, uh, stick this back to the side of the glass, plug her in and get her running again. And that is basically all she wrote for this video. We have made it to the end. I know, I know. <clears throat> it was a long one. So with that being said, <clears throat> I'm going to take the camera now, bring you up close, give you a better look of what it is I'm dealing with and all the kind of fish that I have. So I really, really, really want to thank everybody watching this video to all my subscribers and all to my new viewers who are watching my video for the first time. Thank you so much for being here, showing your support just by watching. And again, thank you to all my 100 plus subscribers that I've gotten so far. And if you are here watching this video, please smash that like button, share this content with anybody else who you know has a love for this hobby, just like us. Get them this content. Maybe it'll make them feel better about uh, maybe taking a dive into this hobby if they're on the edge, if they're thinking about it. And for anybody else, let me know in the comments below what you think of what you saw so far. Um, a lot of content that we covered. I didn't go in depth too much on any one thing other than the water change itself because that was the main focus. I do plan on making future videos, maybe explaining a little more in depth, but simply keep it simple, right? There's a little phrase that's called kiss. Keep it simple, stupid, right? I would love to give my... I guess my take on the nitrogen cycle and try to explain it in a way that anybody and everybody can understand without trying to sound like the super smart chemist on the block. Like, um, I guess I'm not that cool of a kid to know all the scientific terms on everything, especially all of my fish. Um, the names that you typically see in the fish store for them, that's what you're going to hear come out of my mouth. So that's just how it is. I keep it real over here. If you want to know the scientific names on fish, let me know, point them out. I know the information, I will get it to you, but in the name of keeping things simple, that's just like how I, that's just how I explain the game. So if you haven't already checked out my channel, I encourage you to do so. I got some cool stuff on there. I also have uh, a segment and a playlist called Species Profile, which basically means that I'm going through every single fish one by one that you see right now in front of you in my tank. And I'm doing a specific profile on that fish just in case you yourself one day come across this fish in your local fish store, maybe online, and you think about buying it for yourself in your own aquarium, you can learn everything you need to know about that fish before doing so and do it with confidence. So if you have any other ideas on what you think you want to see or what you think I could be doing, maybe there's something that I could be improving on. Um, whatever it may be, I don't care. I'm open to suggestions and I love, I love, I love to talk with all my people on YouTube who leave a comment. And if you don't believe me, go into my past videos and see for yourself. I love dialogue. And I love conversation. Good or bad. It doesn't matter. Let me know. And with that being said, until next time, guys, I appreciate you being here once again. Hit that like, smash it, share it and subscribe. And until then, I'll see you in the next video and I will leave you here with my beauties until the video runs out. So enjoy. Peace.